In this video, we're going to be taking a look at dividing by two-digit divisors and also dividing with money. Now, the first thing you want, well, what we want to think about here with money is whenever you divide with money, the first thing you want to do is move the decimal to the top, okay? And then you want to put that decimal to the top. For example, if we're doing $2.40 divided by 16, we want to move that decimal to the top first of all. And then after we're finished moving the decimal to the top, we want to put that dollar sign right at the top as well. Okay, then after that we can start dividing just as normal. Okay, so we want to write this down. Dividing with money, move the decimal to the top, and then divide just as normal. Okay, and also do not forget the dollar sign in your answer. So what we have first of all is $75 divided by 50. Now we want to remember our steps whenever we divide DMSCB. Divide, multiply, subtract, check, bring down. It stands for does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers? That's how we remember it. Does um, the D and does is divide, multiply, subtract, check, bring down. So the first thing we want to do is just rewrite the problem. Okay, so we have $75 divided by 50. My 75 is my dividend. We remember that because the dividend runs into a dead end within the division house. The divisor is on the outside. And our quotient is going to be our number or is going to be our answer. So the first thing we want to do, we want to take that dollar sign. We're going to put it right at the top. Then after we have done that, we want to take that decimal point and put it right at as part of our quotient. Now from here on out we're going to divide and we're going to forget that there's a dollar sign and a decimal. We're going to divide just like we know how to do. Okay. Now since the divider's, divisor is 50, okay, it makes it a little bit easier. We don't have to round or anything like that. Okay. Now we need to think about 50 and we need to see can 50 go in the 7? All right. In other words, if I had seven M&Ms, could I divide it evenly among my 50 BFFs? And we could not do that. So since we're dealing with money, we want to put a zero right up here. All right. We don't need to put an X. We're going to put a zero right up there. Now, 50 going into 75, we need to think about how many times could we multiply 50 Okay, the most amount of times we can multiply 50 before going over 75, or how many times can 50 go into 75? And it can only go into 75 one time. So we've divided. Now it's time to multiply. 1 times 50. We're going to write that right underneath our 75. So we've multiplied. Now it's time to subtract. F 75 minus 50 is going to give us 25. We check to make sure that 50 or that 25 is less than 50. If that 25 was greater than 50, what we would have to do is to increase this number in our quotient. But we're okay. Now that we've checked it, it's time to bring down that zero. And now we have 250 divided by 50. Okay. Now what we can simply do is think about some of our previous division problems. We can even cross out that zero with our divisor, cross out the zero with the quotient. Now we can do 25 divided by 5. And I know 25 divided by 5 is going to give me 5. And now we can multiply 5 times 50. 5 times 5 is 25. We can add our zero. That's going to give us 250. So we've multiplied. Now it's time to subtract. 250 minus 250 is 0. We check it. 0 is less than 50. Now we can go to our next step of bringing down that next 0. We have 0 here. Now it's time to divide 50 into 0. Now 50 cannot go into 0 at all. So we'll just put a 0 right up in our quotient for a grand total of $1.50. So if I had $75 and I was dividing it up with amongst my 50 friends, we would have $1.50 per friend. Now I want you to get out your pencil and do this problem with me. We have $29.16 divided by 12. The first thing you will want to do is take your dollar sign. We're going to move it right up so it's part of our quotient. We're going to take that decimal point 
and move it on up right into our answer okay right into our quotient as well so now we're gonna go through our division set steps we're gonna divide now whenever we have a two-digit divisor I always like to round it to the closest 10 or 100 or whatever it would be okay and think of it that way that'll help me with my estimating okay so think about 10 or if you want to think about 12 how many times can that number be multiplied by before going over the 2 all right and that cannot work so we're gonna put a 0 right up in our quotient however we know that 12 can go into 29 all right so we think about 12 the most amount of times 12 can be multiplied by before it goes over 29 and let's say we do the number 1 okay now we can multiply 1 times 12 that's going to give me 12 we can subtract it now we're gonna come up with the answer of 17 now we can check that 17 that is actually greater than our divisor so whenever a problem like that happens what we need to do is just change our answer up in the quotient to a greater number so 1 was too small so we'll try 2 2 times 12 is gonna give me 24 now it looks like that's gonna work so you're using the try, check, and revise strategy even as you're going through this. 29 minus 24 does give me 5. We can check that. It is less than 12, so we're good to go. We can bring down the next number, which is the 1. All right, now we're going to do 12 in the 51 if you want to round it. Think about 10 in the 51, the most amount of times it can go in without going over. We're going to say 4 times. Okay, we've divided, now it's time to multiply. 4 times 12 is going to give me 48. Now we're going to subtract it. 51 minus 48 will give me 3. We check, 3 is less than my 12, so we're good to go. Then we can bring down our 6. Okay, now it's time to divide again. Go right back up after we brought down. Go right back up to the dividing again. 12 and the 36. I'm going to say three times. Now it's time to multiply. 12 times 3 gives me 36. We can subtract it. 36 minus 36 will give me 0. We don't have a remainder ever whenever we divide with money. And we have $29.16 divided by 12 will give me the answer of $2.43. Okay, I want you to complete this problem all by yourself. $26.60 divided by 35. When you're finished completing this problem, you can press play and I'll have the answers for you. So I want you to pause the video now. And now here's the answer. 76 cents or 0, 0 0.76 which represents 76 cents you can see all the steps that I took and I did you can see that 35 did not go into 26 so we had to go all the way into 35 into 266 okay so you want to check this problem and compare it if you have any questions you can rewind the video or, or please come and see me now we're going to going to continue on with just regular dividing with whole numbers and divisors okay now I wanted you to write this problem down in your notes with me okay we have 492 divided by 12 we're not dealing with decimal points or money or anything like that we kind of ate our vegetables first on this video we looked at the little bit more difficult problems and now we're gonna do just whole numbers I should have said whole number dividends and divisors earlier on in the video so first of all we're gonna take a look at that 12 we're gonna divide okay 12 going into 4 or we can even round that 12 to a 10 and that's if that's gonna help us out a little bit better 12 going into 4 we know that 12 cannot go into 4 however 12 okay so since we're just dealing with whole numbers here we can even put an X over top of that 4 now we can look at 12 going into 49. We need to think about the most amount of times 12 can go into 49 without going over. Let's say I think of the number 5. Okay, we've thought of the number 5. We're going to multiply it. 5 times 12 is 60. Now, whenever that number is greater than the number above it, you need to decrease the number in your quotient. So 60, I cannot do that because that's greater than my 49. So I'm going to erase that 60. 
going to erase that 5. I'm actually going to make turn that 5 into a 4 now. Okay, 4 times 12 is 48. We can multiply that. You can see 48 is less than 49. Now we can subtract. 9 minus 8 gives me 1. We can check it. That's less than my divisor. So since we're finished with that, we can bring the 2 down. And once you bring down, you always go right back up to the top. Okay. Now we're going to divide again. 12 into 12 goes 1 time. One, now it's time to multiply. 1 times 12 will give me 12. We can subtract. Twelve minus twelve is zero. We can check it. Zero is less than twelve. We don't have any other numbers to bring down. There's not a remainder. So we have four hundred and ninety two divided by twelve gives me forty one. Now I want you to write this problem out as well. One hundred and fifteen divided by twenty three. We're going to divide first of all. Okay. Now we can even take that twenty three and round it to a twenty if that's going to help us out with our guessing, okay, as far as the number in our quotient. So we can see 23 cannot go into 1. It can also not go into a, it cannot go into 1. It cannot go into an 11. So we can put x's over top of that. However, it can go into 115. Now we need to think about the most amount of times 23 can go into 115 without going over. Now I can think about it this way. Think about 2 going into 11. Okay, now I know 2 can go into 11 five times without going over. So we're going to write that in for my quotient, and we'll see if that's correct. Now off to the side, what we will do is just simply 23 times 5. You can even do that on a calculator. I'll let you do that. It's 115. Okay, so we can write 115 right underneath here. 115 minus 115 is going to give me 0. So we have the answer of 115 divided by 23 will give me the answer of 5. Now I want you to do this problem all by yourself. 248 divided by 80. When you're finished with it, you can press play and I'll have the answer for you. So pause the video now. Okay, here's the answer. 3 with a remainder of 8. 80 could not go into 2. It could not go into 24. Or, and, and then because of that, we had to put it in a 248. So it gave us the answer of 3 with a remainder of 8. So if you have any questions about either of these concepts, please come and see me.